Um, that's right. Okay. See, the funny thing is, all the kids over there, they're really going to understand what's going on. Because that's what I'm going to talk to them. Talk to them every time. Yeah. All right, what I want to do is, I want to show you how to find, uh, let's see, the domain, that'd be a cell phone, the domain, the x intercept, and the vertical asymptotes oh. of the problem with this. So the first thing that we want to do is when we're looking at a problem like this is we want to say, all right, first of all, we need to know what is the domain of our parent graph. Before we're trying to figure out our domain, um, well, you know what? Let me actually just approach, yeah, I'll approach it this way. So if we look at our regular problem, we know the parent graph crosses at 0, 1, it looks something like this, where my domain is from 0 to infinity, and my range is from, my range, or I'm sorry, not my range, but my vertical asymptote is when x equals 0. So that was when you had, actually, when you had x log base a of x, and that was the original function. So what you notice is x is equal to 0, and also our domain was when x is greater than 0. So if I'm making some changes with what's in my function x, to find my new domain, instead of saying x is greater than 0, I can say x minus 1 is greater than 0. So when I want to figure out my domain, I pretty much take what's inside of my function, my x minus 1, and I'm going to set it greater or equal to 0. Because really, that's what my domain was for my initial function, 0 to infinity, or x is greater than 0. So now I can solve for x. I can say x is greater than 1. To find my vertical asymptote, here we know that x is equal to 0, but x was my function. Well, now I have x minus 1 equals 0. So I add 1, x equals 1. So my vertical asymptote is x equals 1, and my horizontal, or my domain, is now x is greater than 1. Now I need to find out what is my, um, uh, what is my x-intercept. So my x-intercept is when y equals 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals log base 5 of x minus 1 plus 4. Well, we haven't learned anything from this point to solve for my x when I have a log. So what we can do is I can transfer this to exponential form. But right now, this is not in logarithmic form at all. This still has this plus 4. So I need to get rid of this plus 4. So I'm going to subtract that to the other side. So I get a negative 4 equals log of 5 times the x minus 1. Now what I can do is now I can raise this to this power. So now what I can do is I can say, now I can raise this to exponential form. I can say 5 raised to the negative 4th power equals x minus 1. Well, one thing you guys are going to want to know is if I have this problem, I can put this over this. Whenever you have a negative exponent, you can put it over 1. So it's 1, 5 to the 4th equals x minus 1. Well, 5 to the 4th is 625. So let's just kind of continue this. So it's 1 over 625 equals x minus 1. So then what I need to do is I need to add a 1 to both sides. So I have 1 over 625 plus 625 over 625, right? Because 625 um, over 625 is the same thing as 1. So when I add that, equals x. So therefore, my final answer is, remember, you keep the same denominator. You add your numerators. So I get 626 over 625 equals x. And I believe that wasn't a negative, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a negative. Okay. Um, so therefore, my final answer is 626 over 625. Going down adding, and there you go. So if I was going to graph this, you know, it pretty much like could be a decimal, be one point, a very small number. Um, and really, all I'm doing is I'm shifting uh, my graph over, but then I'm also shifting it up four units. So I'm not going to show you the graph, um, but notice your parent graph it looks like that. So that's how you solve that problem.